Now we put a lot of work into this stand location with travel corridors, bedding, talk about that briefly in a second, but we can't wait to hunt here this season. And uh, this is a stand that we have to stay away from during the early season. The reason for that, it's cruising. This is a cruising area, it's a rut area, it's near a bedding area. We wanna get in here some late October, early November morning, tone numbing morning, slip in here and wait for cruising bucks, bucks that are near these bedding areas back here to come back to us. If we try to do that in the early season, if bucks are back here bedding on either side of the stand location and we get back in here and they're already here, it's hard to beat them during the early season. We really blow these deer out to ruin this bedding area. And that actually, when you do something like that, it can really have damage that extends for weeks to come. So that's one great reason not to get back here. Now we cut this entire bedding area right here. Joel that cuts with me, he came out here and helped in this spot. Cut all this area down here. We have a water hole down there about 150 yards. We have more cuttings and a small hunting plot on the other side of that. If we're gonna shoot deer, it'll be on that water hole in the early season. It'll be on that small hunting plot. But to get back into here into this wheelhouse of bedding, it's just too much bedding to get into in the early season. Now, sometimes I take a chance in the early season in a, in a morning stand, and that's going to be typically over a water hole or a food source where deer are coming off a major food source passing through a small hunting plot or a water hole on their way back to bedding. Sometimes you get rubs and scrapes. Sometimes they're feeding on an oak flat, coming in from ag fields, a little bit of woods in between, and then you're on an oak flat or an oak island waiting for those deer to come back to you in the early season. That tactic works great on public land. You're finding some oak flat, remote, back nords bedding, and you're waiting for the deer to come back to you from distant private land that has food sources, golf courses, neighborhoods, clear cut, whatever it might be and you're waiting for that deer to come back. A lot of times you have an indication that you have some rubs, it's a remote area. If you don't spook them out, you might get that chance. But on private land, you can't afford to take chances. So unless I have some really good intel in the form of our, our reveal cameras, rub scrapes, or a visual of a buck going back to a bedding area in the morning, then I don't want to touch that area. So we have even some small hunting plots that I'd love to sit on in the morning and opening day and wait for a deer to come back to me. But unless I have an indication, that he's moving during daylight through that area, I don't want to go in and wreck it. Really focusing on the early season, those afternoon food sources. And that's why this location right here, this cruising location, we have a travel corridor cut right through here that extends here, goes back on the trail system. That's why this location, although it's a great rut stand, it is a very poor choice for an early season stand set. So even if you had two stand locations for the entire year, I'd focus one more on food, one more on bedding. If I just had those two stand locations, I'd focus on that food source stand early season and evenings. I'd focus on that bedding stand and wait till that end of October, November time frame when you get those first cold fronts and mature bucks are on their feet. So this is that first stand location I would definitely avoid for an early season set. Let's go look at the next one. Now this is stand location number two that I don't think is appropriate for an early season sit and it can really hurt you. This is one of my favorite redneck blind setups. You can see right here how hidden it is getting into it. We have switchgrass planted here. We have really good low access that keeps us out of view of the field. and get in and out without spooking deer, but it's not defined. Not to mention it's not a big food source. So there's always that risk of making a noise when you get in and out and spooking out a two acre food plot. Even though we have great access, hidden access, we can get in and out, there's still that risk. You just make one little noise, hit your bow against the, the blind and you spook those deer and it's over a large area. A lot different if we have one of these blinds in next to a water hole or a little eighth of an acre, quarter acre hunting plot or half acre hunting plot where they're traveling through and it's a true pass through plot. This is a holding plot where deer are sitting here until dark and then we hold them there, they head off to the neighbors. And so not a blind that I want to sit in for opening day or the early season or opening weekend. In fact, I want to wait for this one. It happens to be that the rut here is during gun season, the first uh, weekend in November, first Saturday. So I'll wait till that time to hunt this blind. The perfect time to do so. We have hidden access. We can watch this whole field. We can wait till after dark to get out of here. And we don't need a defined movement within bow shot right in front of the stand. We have two acres out here. If those deer are out here somewhere with a gun, of course we shoot a muzzle or season perfect. 
So while we might be able to set up in the future a nice little clover patch here surrounded by corn or screening and have that little defined spot to hunt we have screening coming to the side that's not quite ready for this yet you know we have an example way in the back where we have a little hunting plot off to the corner of a four acre plot where we get in and out of the stand deer can't see us out in the plot a little bit different here so really avoid sitting on those big blinds in the big blinds on big food plots not where you want to sit for that early season spot. Instead, I'd rather sit on a water hole over here as you're coming in and out of this stand location. A small hunting plot off to the side that represents a true pass-through plot like we have about 200 yards this way. That's a true pass-through, whether either coming off the field in the morning, going back to bedding, or they're coming over this way after getting a quick snack and a quick bike bite after the bedding areas, out of their bedding areas in the evening. Now, number three. So we have bedding area stands that are more rut related. We have big box blind stands along a large food source that are more gun and muzzleloader related. And then also those all day stands, that classic X of movement. Could be a water hole in between bedding areas flanked by big food sources. Could be actually a great bench out in a constriction or a funnel or a saddle or a point way out on public land somewhere between clear cuts. Those deer are not using and making, especially those mature bucks, those long movements back and forth to bedding in those traditional cruising areas that can be there all day. If it truly is an all day stand, it's not a stand that you should likely be sitting in for opening day. There are those exceptions, you get in, you get a glimpse of a buck going through in the morning. You're gonna sit there because you don't wanna spook him. He might come through in the afternoon. But bottom line is, typically if it's an all day stand, all day stands are not appropriate for early season. We all see it, social media, people have all their packs laid out going in for an all-day sit. It's September 12th, Saturday, opening day, and they're gonna go sit all day back in this stand location. Well, likely, if it's over food, they're probably spooking deer on the way in. If it's in a bedding area, the bucks are probably beating them there. If there's traditional rut cruising area, they're probably not cruising yet. So that's where, if you answer those questions, if it's in between bedding and feeding, in between bedding areas, as that traditional X of movement, you think, boy, this is a classic all-day sit, which probably about 15% of our stands and blinds out here equal that, then it's probably not an appropriate early season hot spot for you to go hang your hat on on opening day. Instead, I'm focusing on food sources in the evening that are small on the way through, represent that true kill plot area or a small food source on public lane on the way to a larger one. And of course, those food sources for a morning hunt as deer are coming back from major food sources, passing through that food source, going back to bedding, really focus on food in the early season, maybe focus on water. Look for some of those oak flats where you have hidden hardwood, mature access on one side, you can get in and out without spooking them in their bedding areas, and you're really be on target for finding a great early season hot spot to not only avoid for the season, but to hang your hat on and go find a nice mature buck, whatever mature buck is relative to your area, two and a half year old, five and a half year old, whatever it is, you focus on food and careful sits and not spooking deer, you'll be on the right track to a great early season this year. Hey folks, I really appreciate you watching and I wanna invite you to check out our main website, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. I'm gonna miss all these, but we have seed to offer, hats, articles, web classes, books, consultations, and even a new podcast. I think we have 17 podcasts out there right now for you to listen to. So we have a lot to offer. Most of all, if you don't wanna buy anything, I'm gonna keep offering free videos, free articles. We have over 600 articles on the site. And uh, most of all, thank you very much for watching, reading, listening, being a part of White to Habitat Solutions. If you wanna check this stuff out, awesome. Links are in the description.